with artists working at the intersection of creativity and some of the most urgent social issues that we face as a city, as a commonwealth, and as a country. We have a really exceptional trio of artists tonight uh, who are going to be talking about climate change. Um, and we're really thankful for all of those who have joined us tonight. So it's now my pleasure to introduce uh, Donna Brown, who is the executive director of the South Boston Neighborhood Development Corporation and a generous member of our board and supporter of our mission. And uh, replacing me on this chair in a little while uh, for the conversation with our artist will be Michael Dowling. But first, I'll go to Donna. Thank you. So, Craig, I'm thrilled to be here tonight, and I just want to acknowledge the backdrop you see behind us. This is Allison's work, and it's, it's so awesome to be able to be right here in front of her work. I can see it on the screen, but I've been able to be spend some time in the gallery to see it up close. So I hope folks will actually come by in person and get a chance to take a look at it. Um, the way it's going to work tonight is I have, I'll be asking a couple of questions of our artist panelists. Um, First, I want to let each of them have an opportunity to introduce themselves, and then we'll take. Uh, then they will have a chance to ask each other questions, and then we will have an opportunity for those of you in the audience to ask questions. And you can either put your questions in the chat, or you can raise your hand, and we'll let you unmute and um, the uh, and put your camera on, and you can join us. And I think that would be a much more engaging way to ask your questions. So unless you really feel like you'd rather just write them out, it would be great if you could raise your hand and, and join us, So even though it's virtual. Um, Zoom is wonderful, and, and you can see where I am here in this gallery. But it, uh, it, you know, I think we all miss being in person, and we're, it's not quite the same, but at least it's something. So I'd like to start with the three artists. And, and Carolina, let's start with you. If you could introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about your work and um, your background, and then uh, we'll move on to I missed the last part, but I'm just going to start and you can interrupt me and uh, uh, I'll complete my, my mission. And of course, the lights went off. <laughs> Give me just a second. Okay, I'm going to wing it. So, uh, hi everybody. My name is Carolina Nagon. I am originally from Cali, Colombia. I have been living in the United States for more than half of my life. I have a, a dual life, one as a public artist and the other as a um, landscape architecture professor at UMass Amherst. And I'm here in my office where the lights don't recognize me as a person. I am here and they turn off. Um, for the last, I've been doing uh, art installations for more than a decade now uh, in the Boston metro area, but my work uh, in the last five or six years has uh, really focused on visualizing uh, the effects of climate change in ways that um, are easier to understand, approachable, and um, engaging as a catch-all word to produce experiences that are not um, so negative. So um, I have mostly focused on um, visualizations of future flooding due to sea level rise. And, um, perhaps because of my position in academia, I've been very lucky to work directly with scientists that are uh, in charge of the model so that I can do sort of a, a direct translation of what uh, flood levels for different areas uh, are going to be. I've worked in East Boston uh, on the Rose Kennedy Greenway and currently one of my projects is uh, floating on the Four Point Channel future shoreline. Um, that project seeks to visualize not only what the future flooding will be, but also sort of uh, begin to present what that shoreline modification is going to be like, how we're going to have to raise the land to protect um, this, this um, area of Boston. Um, I'm going to stop so that there's room for everybody else and I can go wave the lights back on. So I'm going to go. My name is Franklin Marwell and I'm a graphic artist and I paint mostly Hearts, and I'm originally, originally from Venezuela, and I'm being around for, I would say, like around 20 years and in the United States. And um, I would say that most of my work is cre creating opportunities for other people to participate 
and collaborate. And, and I run workshops where I create, I may let's say that I find a way to create a space for other people to participate and work together and embrace that part of um, people, you know? And when I'm, when I'm teaching, I, I also, in my workshop, I create workshops and sometimes I take it for, to high schools and communities and all that. And when I do that, I try to, to work with the uh, materials that are like, I have my props with me, my little guides. And they are like boxes that end up on the trash, but we always find a way to, to create and um, using um, elements uh, that are gonna end up on the trash, just to create like a little bit of uh, awareness about that. So that's who I am. And I'm gonna pass it to Alison. Okay, <clears throat> sorry. Hi everyone. Um, I just want to acknowledge that I'm on the sacred land of the Massachusetts and their neighbors, the Wampanoag and Nicknuck peoples. Um, I'm super grateful to be here today sharing virtual space with you all. Um, thank you to Greg and Michael for bringing us all together. And I want to thank fabulous curator Kathleen Batetti for including my work in her layered time series of solo shows that's currently on display. I know that Shay Justice is the artist coming after me in September. So that's really exciting. And I wanna thank all my fellow panelists and Donna and to everyone that's here this evening. So I'm Alice Maria Rodriguez. I'm a first generation Cuban American interdisciplinary artist and I work mostly in video installation. So my end product is usually video installation but in creating that work, I merge and blend a lot of mediums. So I'll use live video shot on location, I'll use studio video, I'll use green screen video, digital animation, hand-drawn animation, photography, collage, sculpture, performance. Basically, I'll pull on whatever it is that I need to realize uh, the work to the fullest extent. And I tend to focus on themes of climate change, species extinction, and this sort of overarching idea of universal interconnection. Um, I work a lot with technology in my work. So the execution of the work is very technical in nature, but it all really emerges from this instinctive place of profound intimacy. For example, the piece that's currently up at Spoke that you see in the background, Once in a Lifetime, it has very spiritual undertones and it comes from a very profound moment in my life that really highly impacted me. It has sort of this heavy, um, beautiful and sad quality to it and it's very much a memorial, but it's not a memorial to just this particular whale, although I am honoring that particular whale um, and that's foremost, but I'm also honoring the place in ourselves that's connected to that whale that is also lost. So I'm essentially asking the viewer to feel intimately connected to the, both the whale and these little hatchling turtles that you see that are struggling to survive. Um, some other examples, I, I tend to use intimacy as a strategy in my work and I work a lot with ideas surrounding trauma. So like thinking about climate change, um, as a collective form of trauma and uh, the earth as a brain experiencing climate change as trauma. And I do I have a project where I interview different female identified and non-binary artists about fantasies they had it, as children that helped them deal with trauma. And I quickly realized, even though that project wasn't intended originally to be an environmental project, I realized very quickly it was because all of these artists, no matter their background or wh where their story came from, it always attached to the natural world as a place of healing and rejuvenation and um, building of energy. So, um, and I also have another project that explores ecological and cultural loss paralleling. I use the personal loss of my deceased Cuban ancestors and parallel that to the collective loss of various species and create like a sacred space that honors both of them. And I'm also very interested in bridging the divide between different ways of knowing. So I see my work as very scientific um, as well as, well, not very scientific, sorry. I see it as very spiritual, but it has a lot of elements of science in it as well. And I think that those co-mingle in a very organic way. So a lot of my work is kind of talking about how there is this arbitrary distinction we have between these different ways of knowing and how they can be integrated into a more holistic way of experiencing the world. Um, 
I love artists, but I also love working with folks outside of my discipline. Um, I get a lot of inspiration from them. And I see art as kind of my way of moving through the world and responding and contributing to the world. And I'd say ultimately like the installation in the gallery at Spoke as well as all my other work, my idea is for the viewer to feel first and think second. So I kind of try to create this moment or opportunity for the viewer to open themselves up to the possibility of seeing the world differently, um, feeling connected to something outside yourself. And when I'm asking the viewer to be open, there's a, there's a point of vulnerability there. But I think that there's a lot of strength in that vulnerability, that interconnection. And that's really the key to our species survival. So that's it for me. Thank you. But uh, let's go back to Carolina. I'll let her start with that. The, the first question is, you know, artists have always wrestled with humanity's relationship to the environment. And it, it seems like, you know, in recent years, in the last couple of decades, there's been even more focus on um, art and the environment and climate change. And I hope there will be more because I think, you know, it, it's, it is our existential issue right now. Um, even though with COVID, I think we've, you know, there's been some diversion from uh, that focus on climate change, but I think we're going to circle back to that and humanity's relationship with this planet. Um, so I'd like to ask you, you know, how do you see yourselves in the continuum of artists who have addressed this issue of the environment and climate change and, and human beings impact on our planet? And Carolina, if you want to start. That would be great, thanks. Thank you, thank you so much. And um, it's so nice to meet my fellow uh, panelists today. I just love know, getting to know your work and, and hearing you. Um, I, it, it helps me um, also think about this, this question. I think from my perspective, it's all about grappling with um, our role and our, our emotions or, as, as humans in, 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 our, in our world and, and dealing with very difficult, very difficult, very, very hard and sad uh, realizations, right? And my personal way of coping with this difficulty is by, you know, almost doing the opposite of like trying to do something that's really beautiful and moving and like that in a way, sometimes it's playful because I think that to sit with this discomfort, one has to also connect to what is good about us humans, right? And to be more sensitive to the environment, one has to appreciate um, and see the beauty. And so, you know, as you talk about the continuum of climate work, I know that for me, it is definitely purposely not about trying to make people feel bad, yet being very um, straightforward about the news that I'm trying to deliver, right? So I try to be accurate in the projections and uh, just sort of that honesty. There's beauty in the honesty as well. So I was like, if you have to give someone bad news, you like wanna do it with a hug. Um, and, and I think that that continues to, to resonate with me as an artist, the sense of how do we, like first, do we even understand what's going on, right? And most people still don't, and that's okay. I mean, you know, that's just why we need to, we need artists, right? Um, and, and as Alison mentioned, the multiple ways of knowing, do we know through our body? Do we know through our senses? Do we know through our feelings? And how do we know, what does knowing mean, right? Um, and ideally for me, I'm, I'm trying to, ask of my artwork to try to do more. I don't know what that more is, <laughs> but I'm leaning into that discomfort of the frustrations of it could do more. What is it? Does it really do? <laughs> um, and, and, and just sit, sit there because I know that it is necessary as a emotional processing of what's going on. Um, it, 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 and a lot more of, of discovery of how we can continue to to grapple with with this issue. Now let my my fabulous panelists take over. <laughs> so, well, listening, I mean, 
paying attention to what you're saying, Carolina. And I mean, this is the first time that I that I that I see you and I and I and I listen to your word and and I think the and when you mention what could we do more, right? And 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 I I stood with that question and and I, I and I think yes we can do better and and uh, la, I would say like last week I was like for the whole week thinking I think we can do better I think I can we can do better and at the end of the week I was like I don't know what I'm, why I'm saying this but I think we can do better and now when I listen to your question I was like yes. I think we can do better. <laughs> it is, it is, it is just, and by by just thinking that way, and I get to know you guys. You know, I, I get to be here with you guys, and and I have the opportunity to to work with Alison in the past week, and getting to know her, and we we've been working on a on a project on the old colony. And we've been running workshops, and and we get to know each other, and and to, to answering your question, it's like yes, we can do better, and when and we can do better when we meet with uh, other artists, and and I know other friends, artists that are doing, they're making jewelry, jewelry out of cardboard, and they are beautiful, you know, and. And I have another friend, uh, this artist that I mentioned is called, uh, she, she, her name is Emma from Dorchester Art Project. And if you check her work, it's just beautiful. And my, my other friend that may uh, work out of uh, recycling materials, like sample materials, Liliana Marquez. And she created these beautiful artworks out of sample materials that are, goes to the trash. Things that architects work may use for just to show, and she's doing this beautiful work, and then you go like, yes, we can do better. And there is another artist that is um, in my same studio building, and her name is a uh, uh, Catherine Ammermet, and she made this beautiful jewelry, jewelry too, and out of foam. And then when you look at it, and that's not foam, that's jewelry, that's beautiful, you know. And I think when we are on this mentality and this way of living, and you're gonna meet more people that are in the same way that, I mean, and, and, and I think we're gonna get better. We're gonna be better. You know, we, things are gonna get better. And, 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 and I think that's, that's a way to, to, to be. I think we need to be on that stage, open to connect with people, open to explain things and and also not just to explain, just to pay attention to what people thinking are thinking, you know? That's, I think that's the most important part. And then connect and then move forward together, you know, like paying attention to our environment. And I think that's answering the question. I think that's, that's, that's a way to, to move, to, to keep going. And we, we, we all wanted to keep going, right? So, Let's keep let's keep doing this, and I think that's 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 the key. So I'm gonna pass it to Alison. Thank you. Um, wow. So you both are so amazing, and um, I guess I'll choose to think about this question in regard to it's about like what is the role of the artist in society, right? And I see the role of the artist as that of a cultural worker. So it is, we are the ones creating culture. And so it's kind of up to us to think outside the box, to look at things differently, to break rules, to analyze. Um, the real value I think in an artist is not necessarily the product or the, end, the thing they create, but it's the way they think about the world. And I had a friend once tell me that, that if you never make another thing in your life, you'll still be an artist. And I, I wanna make a lot of things, <laughs> but her point is really significant that it's about how we engage with the world and how we work with the world. And so I see it as my personal responsibility to use the skills that I have um, 
I do scientists, politicians are, what they're doing is incredibly important. So, but so is the role of artists and how we can engage in discourse with those folks in order to work together to make change. So I think ultimately looking back historically, it's because it's, it's a timely matter, it's an urgent matter and it makes sense that artists and would be responding to that. Thank you. enough, but it, it's such an important question. And it's, you know, what kind of support do you need as artists to continue your work? Besides funding, of course, we, I think we all know that. But, but what, what makes a difference for you as an artist to, to keep you going in this work and to, to help you, you know, expand your work and make people more aware of your work? Uh, what can we collectively do to, to get you more support? And I think we'll start again with Carolina. <laughs> Thank you. Um, let's not skip over the funding because if we don't get the funding right, that's it. I mean, just, I, 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 I don't wanna, it's not, I, I know it's sort of not cool to just keep talking about funding, but really what is being asked of artists and that the way that art is supported, they just do not meet. Full stop. It's just impossible. I mean, the la and because and, and also what it signals, it signals lack of appreciation. It signals the lack of importance. It signals this idea that because uh, that an artist must suffer or an artist must really love what they do and they must be willing to do it for nothing for it to be real. It continues this idea that of art as a, the starving artist. It continues this idea that art is not worthwhile. You're too smart to be an artist, I was told. Study something that you can make some money out of, architecture or something. And it's impossible to, you know, and we live in a capitalist society, <laughs> right? I mean, yes, we would like it for it to not be so, but it is, right? And is there signaling that goes with it? So, oh, well, you find your own funding, you write your own contract, you go get your own permits, you go battle. People that have a full-time job, benefits, blah, 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 whose only job is to make your life harder while you do this as an artist. But we really appreciate you. Like, do you? And so, ah, I don't know. Yes, I I'm sorry. I will just get stuck on the funding because it is, if we had better funding, we would do better work. We are overextended all the time. And I am super privileged. Uh, this is my office at the University of Massachusetts. I cannot believe it, right? That's how I can like take care of my kids and all of that. And I see myself as a public servant The taxpayers of the state of Massachusetts pay for my salary. And it is my job to do well by them. And I, I, I try, you know, and I'm trying to be the best teacher I can and all of that, right? And I'm using, I'm using computing research just to fund my artwork because <laughs> fine, we need more art in the world, whatever hack it takes. Uh, but yes, I think it's, it's just really important to acknowledge it and, and, and speak about it openly and shamelessly. We're not less of an artist because we, we talk about not being properly funded. That's my rant, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't disagree with you. Um, Franklin, you want to weigh in on this too? Yes, please. Um, yeah, uh, I agree. And I have to say that funding is very important. And I would love to see proposals right this way. Like, okay, let's say this grant is going to be for $10,000. And Let's say the artist is going to get, I don't know, 50% of the number for the project. And let's say budget is going to be 5,000. But if you don't spend it, and then if you use for your project or research or 
whatever for your if you don't if you use re, existing materials and if you report 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 material for your project and you get what I mean if you deliver what you say by using by recycling and reusing you can get the full amount of money you know and I mean it would be nice I, I mean this is hard because not everybody is going to say yes let's do that you know let's because I, I, I has to I mean I I like when I go to the store and to get paint and to get paint brushes and to get canvases and or we I, I can I, I can name my whole list for hours but it's like creating a better structure. Okay, so make it work, look around, and use what you have around. You, wanna, you want the color red, so let's make the color red with what you see around. I mean, it's, it's gonna be harder if you are teaching how to paint, right? But, but I think, I mean, it's, I, I think uh, worth a try. You know, I think if we talk a little more about what that means, I think it can be a very good way to to move forward. Like, okay, let's not make it that easy. Let's work. Let's make. Let's create the tools. Let's create the colors. Like, let's create the elements that we use for our art with the things that we find around. Like. I mean, I don't want to say, I don't want to, I don't want to tell uh, some a realistic artist to paint a beautiful portrait with a box, right? But, but, but if we start that way, I think something, we, I mean, I think there is something there. I don't know. But yes, we need funding, you know, we, <laughs> we need funding and, and we are encouraging other people to think Think, keeping in mind the world, you know, and and I think it's like, I mean, at the same time, I'm I'm thinking of what is going to happen if we create projects just by thinking this way. But I mean, I'm going to take this one home. <laughs> I'm going to think about this. I think there is something there. But Yes, this, I, I'm taking this one home. I'm gonna, I'm gonna think about this part, and I'm gonna let Alison go. Thank you both. Oh, wow. Am I on now? Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So I'm gonna agree. Um, I think thinking about the three things that are all interconnected that we need. It's like funding cultural value um, and collaboration, I think are three things that we need. And the, the value is related to funding because I think as artists, our, we're, our practices just are not valued in the United States in the, the way that they should be. Um, and as it was stated, Carolina mentioned like, we're sort of expected to be so passionate about what we are doing and we do care about climate change. So, but also, you know, we care so much about this issue that we should be volunteering. And I do do a lot of volunteer work, but it's not within the, like the art world is my calling, that's my profession. So I volunteer doing other things. <laughs> um, so I think that that's important. And I think that that's linked with the value of artists in a capitalist society because we're not funded properly. We're also not valued as much because of capitalism. So in turn, if we're funded better, if we're actually written into the budgets and not like as an afterthought, but as a essential part of the building of the structure, we, we gain more cultural value in the United States, uh, economic value. Um, yeah, and collaboration, I think working with other organizations, meeting other artists, like, like both the panelists here, Franklin getting the opportunity to work with you. I think that's all 
incredibly important. And I think organizations who are not arts related, but integrate artists and support artists are also really important in raising that kind of like economic recognition of the artist's status in society. Um, for example, I did a fellowship um, a couple years ago and the head scientist at the research station brought me in just because she wanted an artist to be having dialogue with the scientists. She wasn't like really expecting an end product. She just wanted that kind of communication to be happening. And so seeing value in those sorts of things when organizations recognize that and build artists into their teams, it increases economic value and our potential to be funded. Um, but yeah, funding just can't be skipped over because it's really the biggest one. <laughs> Thank you. But I, I think it's great that you also brought up collaboration because it, it to me that that's something that, um, you know, in my work, it's mostly around affordable housing and economic development and the issue of climate change and climate action as someone who lives and works in South Boston has become more and more important to me because we, you know, South Boston, for folks who are, who are watching or may watch this later, South Boston is this peninsula. We're surrounded by the ocean here. And yet it's a neighborhood that historically really has not been a, you know, tree huggy green kind of place. It's been a, a real, um, it, for a long time, blue collar working neighborhood, working class neighborhood. And its history has not, there, there hasn't been a priority for gardens and parks, even though we, we're blessed to have, you know, way back in our history, folks who did set aside these amazing spaces along the South Boston waterfront for, for parkland and for beaches. But now we, we really, as a neighborhood, have not focused on planting trees and mitigating climate change and facing this fact of rising sea level here. And so um, as a group of nonprofits here in South Boston, we've been trying to collaborate. And Michael and I have been colleagues for a long time here in the neighborhood. And I really wanted to work with Medicine Wheel Spoke as an arts organization to, to find ways to engage people around this issue of climate action. That, and to you know reach them in a different way than as an activist, I feel like sometimes we're really preachy and that turns people off or they just feel so overwhelmed by the topic. They don't know how to engage with it. They don't know how to, to think about it differently and to take some of the you know, political baggage out of it and, and get people to think about climate in a, in a human way, but in, in that relationship to the environment. So it's, it's really gratifying me to have you all here and, and your optimism is just amazing and wonderful to see and I, I feel so privileged to be able to be here and engage with you all even if it has to be on Zoom um, to talk about this issue and recording this tonight means that it's it's saved so that it's people can engage on at, at this level with us even if they're not here with us this evening and as you all probably know it's a beautiful sunny evening here in South Boston so and those have been rare with this July weather we've had. So it's great to have it recorded. And I think that is the one of the advantages of Zoom is that we, you know, we have that ability to, to save this conversation over time so people can look at it later and even if they couldn't be here on such a lovely evening. So I want to introduce Michael Dowling from um, Medicine Wheel Spoke, founder of this organization. And we have we want to give the artists a few minutes. I don't know, Michael, do you want to jump in now? You want to give the artists a chance to ask each other's questions first. Um, I, I'll jump in now. Hi. Okay, <laughs> so you can ask them a question and then we'll let them ask each other questions. How's that? No, I just want to thank uh, Donna and Greg and, uh, you know, these three, I have to put my glasses on so I can see, see myself on the screen and see everyone else. Um, I am like so humbled and so honored to be you know, in practice with the three of you, you know, as artists who really believe that art has the power uh, to invite people to locate themselves in all situations in life, right? And, and the easy ones and perhaps the more difficult ones like climate change, right? And, you know, each of you, you know, your practices uh, and your work is so compellingly beautiful. And, and I think, you know, in listening to people talk about funding, uh, one of the things that people didn't mention was, you know, we're not making commodities as artists who are practicing the way that we are. 
you know, we really are providing services and they're human services. And, you know, the work really is about the human condition and, and the effect and the impact that climate change has on the human condition, on immigration, on migration, on crops, on, uh, on the weather, on everything imaginable. And, you know, oftentimes that aperture that we open up with our work, that aperture that is beautiful, right, that invites people into a moment of awareness that is transcendent. And then the takeaway, of course, is the pondering, the wondering, the thinking. And the impact is really profound. All three of you have really impacted. You know, Carolina, I don't know your work very well. I'm just, I'm new to it, but I feel we have an affinity that is beyond belief. So I cannot wait for us to, to connect. And Allison, living with your work on a daily basis here at Spoke no, has so been <laughs> just phenomenal. And Franklin, you know, I think all of our work, I love that we were talking about spirituality as part of this, and restoring the spirit of our connection to things, right? That interconnectedness that Allison so beautifully talks about. And, you know, and more love is okay, right? And I think, you know, Franklin's message that all of this work is so deeply based in the need to love ourselves, to love each other, to love the world that we live in, right? And to honor that and to invite others through cultural action, right? And I think Allison's comments on inviting people to take cultural actions in their life, whether or not she produces another piece of work, is really what is going to change, uh, change awareness around issues like climate and really invite people to be on board. I really think you, each of us uh, are like acupuncturists for the earth, right, is that we find a, a, a topic or a hot spot and, and we put art there. And, and you know, the vibration of that art changes that place. And so when people can come to it anew, and they could appreciate and see more clearly uh, their own impact on it, and they're invited then to take cultural action. So this is very, very, uh, a little bit overstimulating for me. I don't want to talk too much because I'll take up all of the time, but I, I'm, I'm so honored and just um, would love you know, just to hear a little bit more about, specifically about climate, climate in Boston and the power of art to really make us as a people reflect on that. I guess we'll keep the order. Um, I'll go. So you're, that to rephrase, did I hear you correctly, uh, uh, Greg, the, the climate in Boston to, for art, for receptivity to this, to the kind of work that we do? I don't know if that was your, that was his question or not, but um, I have seen it evolved. When I first installed High Tide, which was my first project when I was just like, oh, and this could also be about climate change, you know. <laughs> um, the Boston Climate Ready Report hadn't been uh, made public, right? And so it's really been interesting, you know, to see the fast, I mean, I happen to be connected to the planning, the regional planning and the city planning world and, you know, and sort of become very aware of this document and then like talk to these people. But it's like in five years, that landscape change, <laughs> we went from like, is climate change still going on? To like, whoa, now we're building these walls or now we're having to redo all our shores, what? <laughs> and so it's, it's really important, you know, and I am someone like, for a living, I am connected to these things and I still go like, whoa, that's a lot that's going on. And I feel the sort of need or like I, one of my roles is to put this out in the world, right? And that's another artist superpower. We, you know, have this capacity through our work to reach a lot of people with like a tiny budget. Imagine if we were like an actual marketing, you know, right? Right. <laughs> but but then it was also like a superpower. Like you're an artist, you're like, oh, you're an artist. So okay, you get to put stuff out in the public or the public to see whatever you thought was good. It's like, wow, wow. <laughs> I don't need, you know. So I think it's increasingly important. I think also as artists, we or at least my experience has been I get access to places that if I didn't call myself an artist, I would not get, have access to meetings, to information, to to knowing. 
I feel like a little fly on the wall was like, hmm, why am I in this corporate boardroom? <laughs> you know, oh, this is what these places look like. Okay, just so that I can ask permission to use a site so that I can kind of maybe promote that this is a place that could be safe to build on so that you guys can make billions of dollars. Hmm. Okay, and you're not giving me a cent for this? Okay, uh, but so it's interesting. You know, then, then, but you incorporate that in our work, right? You, you're like, you then know it. You have a view of the landscape of what's happening in town that maybe not everybody else does. So I think we should also be very, and I think we are in tune with that, right? Like, and leaning into that discomfort seems to me like my mantra for the last three weeks. So <laughs> like, hmm, I just doesn't feel right. What is it about it? And not let it go. You know, begin to question the how to do more or why is this bothering me? And then being okay talking about it instead of just saving it for later. So I think the climate for climate art, if that was a question and maybe it wasn't, and I just went off on a tangent. Uh, I think it's, it's good because there is a lot going on. There's a lot at stake. And I think we should always remember that a lot of these decisions, most of these decisions, our decisions about what to do with our taxpayers' dollars. And we all have a voice on how this money is being used. So I think the more people are informed and the more they're connected to their feelings and place uh, in the world about it, the, the better. Um, and I'll stop. Thanks. Wow. So yes, I mean, in those places when you are getting by to places and you go like, you're here for a reason. You're here for a reason. They don't, they, you're here because you are able to do things that they are no, they don't know. And, and it is, wow, it is true, you know? And, and I'm being thinking about this just now. Like, it's not like I grew up thinking like art is a power, no. This is something that I get to know right now. And, and because I mean, when we, when we grew up, we were like, okay, art, okay, uh, what else, right? And yeah, there is, there is a lot that we can do, right? Uh, imagine, like you say, like imagine with funding <laughs> with a whole marketing office on your side, you know? Yes, funding is important. <laughs> <laughs> and how I, I, I saw a, a question, a message from Kathleen and Kathleen and say funding and affordable space. I'm about to maybe losing my space right now. So I think it's very important, but that's not what I want to say. I want to, I, I mean, what I wanted to say is that the reason that I'm working with Alison today is because thank you for medicine will. I mean, without, they're giving us funding to do this project and to work. So thank you for that. And, and we need more people like Mason Will <laughs> around, you know, advocating for artists, artists advocating for <sighs> humanity. So we need more of that. And I, I think, and that's good. I think we can do better. We're doing better. So I'm gonna pass it to Alison. Thank you. And yes, um, I'm very grateful to Medicine Wheel and Spoke for the opportunity that um, Franklin and I have to work together. Just meeting Franklin has been like an amazing experience for me. So I'm just so excited to be connected <laughs> and um, to emb be embarking on this kind of beautiful project together. Um, I think that the question was asked in a very open way. So I think I'm gonna approach it in that I think about Boston in relation to a lot of the work that I do, like the piece that's in the gallery is, that's Costa Rica. And I have another project right now that's up at Northeastern, that's Churchill, Manitoba. And I see when I'm in these spaces, the connection to Boston, I feel that interconnected energy. And so when I bring those pieces here, this is their home in a way, you know, this is part of, it's all interconnected. So these spaces kind of make evident, I think, it's like if you can feel connected to the far north where you've never been, you know, how does that make you feel connected to the place that you're in right now? Um, I'm working on a piece for later this year where I'm projecting 
imagery of the Hudson Bay, which I was told the, um, within 20 years, there would be no ice on the Hudson Bay in July. And I'm projecting those waters onto ice from North Adams, kind of showing that interconnection between places that the water there is relevant to the water here. So I, that's kind of how I think about uh, the work that I do in relation to, to Boston and site specificity. Um, yeah, I think that's all I had for that question. Um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> each other questions um, if, you, if anybody wants to jump in you know Car Carolina if you have a question for either of the other artists you get to go first oh goodness um, Franklin uh, I'll have one for each how about that so Franklin I um, just recently have been thinking a lot about the role of like emotions and love and like being very open about you know, we need to, I, mean, I teach landscape architecture. It's like, we need to design places where people feel loved. You know, what does that look like? So I'm very curious about like more love is okay. And where do you see this? Do you see it continuing? Like, you know, do you have like any, any dreams to go bigger? Cause it's such a powerful, you know, idea. Thank you for the question. And, and it is, it is, I mean, there is a lot that you can do with that, you know? And when you wake up every day thinking that way, more love is okay. It's just a phrase, you know? And when you wake up every day thinking, okay, more love is okay. What, what, what are we gonna do today? And that's the attitude. We wake up with an attitude and that they see what we can do. And, and it's not just like what you can do, it's like paying attention to people and saying, you know, like, I like that. You are telling to somebody else that that's good. And, and then you go like, oh, you did good. That's, that was really, really good. I mean, you're appreciating all their actions, right? And, and there is something that I do all the time. And I know I'm not gonna say that I'm perfect. I'm not perfect, and but I wanna get better. That this is me being wanting to be better, right? Every time that I say that, it's because I wanna be better, and, and there is a lot that I need to to make it right. I mean, there is, we are used to say things in so many ways and so many situations that that they are not right, and and so we are unlearning. When I say that, it's because I'm learning and paying attention and like. Well, I was used to say that. And I go like, no, no, that's not this. Maybe. And then you fix things. So, and you start to uh, be aware of the things that, that are good. I use that to, to correct myself. Mm -hmm. When somebody get in front of me or when I'm driving, I go like, I, I, I feel the rage and I go like, oh, what is that? So I pay attention to things now. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing this since 2014. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I have, I'm being learning is, 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 is really cool, you know, and, and, and I think I, I'm getting better. Mm -hmm. And, and so I just want to leave it right there because I mean, there is so much that I can talk about in my experience by just repeating the phrase and creating a space to, to, to repeat the phrase and it, it's been it's been good, so there is a lot to do, it's a lot that we can do with that phrase. Very beautiful. Thank, Thank you. you for the question. <laughs> of course. And and, 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 and I want to work with you in some point. Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> of course, this is the whole point. This is a, this is why this is happening. Alison, I I saw your work and it's just so moving and just wow, like it it I had it resonated with me in so many ways. The sort of the the microscopic, the emotional, the sort of fantasy, real. I mean, wow. Um, so you know, I I am curious. You know, because I, I don't I've never worked with video and I but, you know, I, I'm at like the most basic video level, which is just like the blinking shiny light. Like I'm at the cat, which is like, you know, it's like, look, it moves.
<laughs> the twinkles. I love it. Uh, but like video is so powerful, right? Like, oh, a screen. You know, you get this immediate attention. And but you do it in such a way that sort of overlays. So I don't. I, my question to you is, um, where you know. Where would you take this next? Or like, if you could imagine, um, you know, sometimes there's these interactive things, you know, in public space, you know, the sort of merging of the digital, like if you and I, if your projects and my projects were still moving with the wind could have a baby, you know, or like, what could that be? How could, you know what I mean? Like, how does one take video and like really grounded to that particular environment potentially? I don't, have you ever thought about doing something like that? Thank you so much for your kind words. I mean, I'm such a fan of your work too. So that really means a lot to me. Um, I'm not totally sure if I'm gonna answer the question correctly, but <laughs> um, I love the idea of having more space to work with. And of every time I do a new project, I usually incorporate some element where I have no idea what I'm doing where it just comes in my head and I'm like, I have no idea how to create that, no idea how to build it. Let's go, I have a deadline. <laughs> so- it not be Google. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's lots of, lots of tutorials and stuff like that. But um, I, I like creating structures that I project on or work with light mm -hmm. and structure. Mm -hmm. So I, the, whenever I have larger spaces to work within, I like building a whole experience for the viewer. So I will work with monitors, I'll work with actual lighting effects with projection as both image and light source and also with structural components that create sort of an immersive kind of experience. And I could see our work doing that together. Oh, I, love <laughs> <laughs> I love it, I love it, thank you. Thank you. Do you have questions for either of the, or both of the other artists? Yeah, that's me. So I, I have a, I don't, I'm not sure if I have a question because going back again with the, with the funding, without funding, can we work together? I mean, I, 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 I would, I would love to work with you guys. I mean, I'm working with Alison right now, but I want to work with Carolina. And I mean, this is, for me, it's a little complicated because there is a lot that we can do when we work together that I think we don't need money. And I'm gonna say that, but, but there is so much that we can achieve and then get money later, I will say, yeah, I'm gonna leave it at that, you know, but, I, I, I spend a lot of time thinking about that, um, but at the same time, I need to pay my bills. So I have my loops going around and I really hope that we can work together at some point, I'm talking with Carolina and working with Alison right now. And I, I, I wish I can keep working with Alison and, and doing all, everything that we've been talking about. And with Carolina, I saw you work for the first time yesterday. And I was like, I think that was, I was like, I like that. That's clever. So I wanna keep seeing your work. So if I see funding around for you, I'm gonna redirect that toward you. So that's all I'm gonna say. Thank you. Thank you, that's okay. Do you have questions for um, Carolina and uh, Franklin or either one of them? Um, I, I don't know how much time we have, so I don't want to take up all of it, but I do, I am curious, it's kind of a fairly generic question, but we work with a very heavy topic. And I get asked that question a lot about how do you manage uh, not getting depressed working with such a heavy topic. And I respond often that it's how I deal with such a heavy topic. It's how I process it. It's how I move through the world. It's how I survive is by making art. So even though I do create art with the viewer and the experience as the ultimate goal, it's also, there's a very selfish survival mechanism in there for me as well. And I'm curious how you both think about that as well as maybe 
that in this is kind of vague, but that in relation to process, I suppose, like when ideas catch you and how you move with them. Um, it's a very kind of art process question. So take it however you'd like and don't answer if you don't want to, um, but I'm curious to hear. <laughs> I can go because I like to talk. Huh? Um, it's the first time that I have been in a panel where this has been openly discussed and it is the first time that I've heard a fellow artist say what I would, what I say. This is how I deal with it. This is why I do this kind of work because it is so overwhelming and it's so sad, but this is the only way I know how to cope. Um, yeah, right? And <laughs> the lights <laughs> for drama. So the, the other thing about process, I think for me, my process has become more linked to, you know, at, at a personal level, this, I am, I am ultimately an immigrant, right? Like I think you guys also are. And it's this idea of recreating a home or connecting to this other home. And so it's about doing work that's in a place, but it's with, all, you know, as any art project does, it, it, it forces you to work collaboratively, right? And so it's almost the experience of creating the piece that is more valuable to me than the piece itself. People's like, oh, but you surely want lots of people to go see it. And I was like, I wanted to see it. Like, but then beyond that, I was like, Wait, I don't know what's going to happen. It's not, it's not like a, oh, I'm a climate artist. Like never. It's more like my team, you know, and being forced to make friends and, you know, all that important, necessary part of doing the, the ungoogable, right? You cannot Google how to do our projects. It's like we're every time we're doing a spaceship from scratch with no funding. <laughs> and there's just that it's, it's, it's almost living proof of resilience. You know, I always thought about like, you know, we do climate change type work and there's a lot of like throwing of the word resilience out there. But like what we do in essence is like proving over and over again that the creative human spirit can do these beautiful moving things as a result or in response to this very scary, hard reality. So I did it that, Alison, it's so wonderful to, to hear that. Thank you. And um, that is a good question, Alison. Um, and, and you guys are doing the right thing and that gives me hope. And, and I know the power that we have to make people see things on the right way. And so we need to keep every, I mean, when we are thinking this way, where you wanna meet with more people thinking the same way and working for the same cause, right? And so we need to create space for us where we can meet and invite more people to, to spread the word. I mean, it's all about awareness and action. It's not just awareness, it's action. So we need to do an action. We need to do things right away. And um, so we need a space for us to get together, combine forces, and people will change, you know? People will change. And I have seen it. And uh, every time that I go to the street to a new project or, or whatever, any, a new conversation, if you're starting in, in a different way, like you pay attention to listen to people, listen to people, listen, listen, listen. And then you will have the opportunity to make a comment and you're going to meet in the middle and then you're going to go, okay, so what can we do? Okay, yes, that's what, that's, that's what we want to hear. What can we do? Okay, this is what we do. This is what we can do. And by doing that, I think we are going to go to the right. I mean, you're going to find things, people that are going to say like, ah, no. But that's what we want. Let's create this space where, the, where we can make people think and go like, you know what? I'm going to support this. And not just that. This is what I'm, this is what I'm going to do. And I have seen it. So let's keep doing what we're doing. And that was a very good question, Alison. Thank you.
I've just about run out of time. So thank you all so much for participating tonight. This was amazing. And I, I think two catchphrases stick with me. One is art is superpower, which I love because it's so true. And the other is we can do more. So I think, you know, I'm going to leave it at that. And, and thank you again for, for spending the time with us this evening. And we can all do more and we will do more. And I, that's it. So I hope you all who didn't get a chance to be here in person enjoy this um, when you're able to take a look at this interview tonight. Have a great evening. Thank you.